Audio malt check. Audio malt check. Press check. White balance. If you guys want one, white balance. Malt check with white balance. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Good morning. I am nobody. I am the audio tester guy. Check one, two. Check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, malt check. Get thumbs up, guys. You good on white balance? Everybody good? Thumbs up. Thank you. Check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen. One, two, one, two. Check you, one, two. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Good morning. I love the enthusiasm. Love the enthusiasm. My name is Laura Durger Roberts. I am the president of Vinyl Max Windows. We manufacture about 300,000 replacement windows each year in Hamilton, Ohio, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all here today. I know I'm not the one you're here to see, but soon, but soon. First, a little bit about us. Uh, like I said, we are a, a window manufacturer. We are a family-owned business, and we actively source American-made components for our products. And we're proud to label our products Made in USA. And we sell those products to American families from the East Coast to the Rockies. This year marks our 30th anniversary, and Vinyl Max started, as many American businesses do, as a mom and pop shop founded by my parents, who are here tonight, here today. Now, every business owner here knows that a family business impacts the entire family. My parents both felt the uncertainty of starting a new business. They both lived the sacrifices to start an American business, and we all shared the disappointments and the triumphs of our American family business. <laughs> so now I am proud to share ownership of that business with my parents and my five siblings, and I share the management responsibilities with three of my brothers as we carry on the entrepreneurial spirit that was instilled in us from such a young age. My family has endearing stories about uh, how we got our start in the business. There are stories of us doing accounting work around the dining room table and making sub-assemblies in front of the television. But small business is not all endearing stories. There were months that my father didn't bring home a paycheck so that we could pay our employees and we could pay our vendors. There were personal checks that my parents, my siblings, and myself wrote to infuse our business with more capital. As, as kids, as, as young adults, uh, my siblings and I were thrust into management positions that we had no experience for, and the only thing that drove us to success was the fear of failure. Well, we have experienced great success. The early 2000s blessed our business with unbelievable growth. We created more than 100 new jobs in the early 2000s. <laughs> in 2007, we built a new 150-foot, 1,000-foot square uh, manufacturing facility in Hamilton, Ohio. four years tell a very different story for our business. Since President Obama took office, we have laid off 62 employees. The demand in our industry for windows has dropped dramatically over the past four years as uh, American families don't have the disposable income they once did to buy windows. 
And we all know the new construction, the new construction business has tanked under this administration. American businesses like mine cannot afford four more years of this. This election will chart the course for American small businesses, for family businesses like mine and like yours. Important factors like health care costs, regulation and taxes, job creation, all of those things impact us greatly. When I see Obamacare looming in front of us, I wonder how can this policy be beneficial for American families? It will drive up the cost of every American-made product on the shelf today. The answer is clear. These policies have not, cannot, and do not support American business and American families. But there's some good news. Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan have a very solid plan. American families and American businesses with tax reform and job creation and health care for everyone that actually works. When I look back over our 30-year history as a business, the years that were good for us were also good for our employees. The years that were good for us were the years when taxes were low and opportunities were high. Working families and job creators both can enjoy those benefits under Mitt Romney for president. It is my hope that every single one of you will join me in supporting Mitt Romney for president of the United States of America. families can thrive again. Thank you. Now I'd all ask you to, to help me welcome to the stage Kelly Hollitz. Star Safety. It's a business that is operated out of Lachlan, Ohio, about eight minutes from here. And I too, like Laura's family, my products are made here in the United States. <laughs> I'm glad you're clapping. I'm glad you're clapping because when I tell you what my company, First Star Safety, does, hopefully you'll all still be clapping. I sell and rent what many would consider to be the unofficial mascot of the state of Ohio, orange barrels. I sell them all over Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and out of my warehouse in Lachlan, myself, along with my entire team, we work as subcontractors to general contractors, and we implement traffic patterns, the road closures, the detours that you all drive through every single day. Seven years ago, when I got this grand idea from a dear friend and mentor of mine who's here today, Bob Adlita, I went to over a dozen banks. And it wasn't because there wasn't money to be lent, but no one believed in what I was doing. Everybody looked at me and said, you're going to sell what? And so I just took a leap of faith. At the time, I owned a small house in the town that I grew up in, Deer Park, Ohio, not too far from here. And I took a big leap of faith in myself. And with the help of family and friends, I took a second mortgage out on my house. I started my company. Today, I'm glad to say that second and first mortgage has been paid off. Thank you. I have experienced great growth. 
From my first year in business to my second year in business, my business quadrupled. That was in 2006. In the years to follow, my, gr my growth was approximately 35% every single year. I made a profit every year until a few years ago. There was a major change in when the Obama administration went into office, there was a major change in the amount of taxes that I have paid as a small business and being as corporated as an LLC. Now, some of you here may understand that and may realize what that means, but basically the government looks at my business and myself as one entity. Any profit that my business shows, they record as my income. That is not the income that I put in my pocket and I go vacation with. That's the money that I put back into my company to grow my company, to hire more employees, and to take on bigger projects. Over the last four years, my tax rate has increased 21 times. It's absolutely despicable. The amount of money that I pay in taxes every year, I could employ a large handful of people. And unfortunately, because of the amount of taxes that I pay, because the Obama administration doesn't understand small businesses, doesn't understand where our money goes, doesn't make the connection that it goes from the business back into our company to our employees, I have, I have been at a standstill. And the last two years, I have only experienced a small amount of growth. And for me, it's very discouraging. However, the most encouraging part of this entire process is I know, along with all of you here today, on November 6th, I will be able to go to a poll, I will be able to vote for the Romney-Ryan ticket, and I will be able to make things change. Part of the, part of the Romney ticket, part of the Romney ticket is that he encourages and plans on championing small businesses. And as I said, this is unfortunately something President Obama does not understand. I need a champion on my side. I am a small business with a small handful of employees. I need the president and the government to be on my side. Not because I feel entitled, I don't feel entitled, because I deserve better. You all deserve better. Everyone deserves better. With that being said, I know they're going to move the program along. I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Angela Fronis, and she is with BTAS. I had the good fortune to meet Governor Romney when he was helping Senator Portman run for office. They were both attending a Department of Defense conference in Dayton, Ohio, and stopped by my booth. I told Mr. Romney, when you're elected president, don't forget about small business. He asked what we were experiencing, and I told him about the declining funding for government programs that cut our contracts, the shocking contractor to civilian conversions or hiring that the government was conducting, all of which took employees and positions that they had held from contractors. We had spent time and money competing for these contracts, and the government was essentially hiring our staff out from under us and taking their jobs along with them. I told Governor Romney that as a business owner, I was threatened. And as a taxpayer, I was frightened. It's far more expensive for the government to bring on employees than to contract them from small businesses. This, just, this wasn't just happening in Dayton. This was happening across the nation in all the bases that we supported. I asked him, how are we supposed to cut our, our, adjust our business when our customers hire our employees and then cut our contracts? For many of us, it was a threat to our survival. He listened intently. 
and it dawned on me that he already knew what was happening and how it affected companies like mine. He knew all of this, and yet he carved out a moment to listen to me. I was astonished at his generosity and his empathy. This is when I realized that Mitt Romney is not your ordinary politician. Now contrast, that's true. Contrast that experience with what happened six months later. I received a personal invitation from President Barack Obama's administration. I was invited to the President's Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. This was supposed to be an opportunity for the Council to listen to small business owners and to find out what we needed from Washington in order to build jobs in America. We were told that this information would be briefed to the President. Can you imagine how honored I felt? I thought it was a fantastic opportunity and I attended. The administrator of the Small Business Administration was there. The chairman and CEO of General Electric was there. A representative from the Commerce Department was there. All of them had flown into Dayton to talk to small business owners from a variety of industries. I actually thought President Barack Obama was serious. In actuality, their objective was to suggest that we take SBA loans and hire people that were out of work without us gaining any new business. We were supposed to take on debt to hire people to do what? That's not what we thought this council and this meeting was to be all about. And our reaction was overwhelmingly, no thank you. We don't need that kind of help. I wanted, I wanted to tell President Barack Obama, that's not how you build jobs, sir. That's how you build debt. Apparently something he knows a lot about. In this election, we have two drastically different men with two drastically different agendas for the United States. There is really one solution for our nation, and that's Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. What they're offering us is real reform, and that's the only way for a real recovery. He knows exactly what it takes to fix this economy and take us in a better direction because he's already done it. Over the next two weeks, we all need to get involved in order to ensure that he carries Ohio in this election. We need to talk to, we need to, talk to friends and neighbors and admit it, some family members. We need to reach out to those who are great candidates for the absentee ballot so that they don't have to stand in those long lines on Tuesday and they can vote from home. Mr. Romney shouldn't have to bring in Ohio without our help. He has a job to do and so do we. Let's show this nation that Ohio knows a first-class act when we see one, and that's in Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. I'll see you at the polls.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cincinnati's own Senator Rob Portman. County looks an awful lot like Romney Ryan country to me this morning. What a crowd. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. Have a seat. First of all, I want to thank Jet Machine for letting us come by. What a terrific company. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women you see behind me there, the Wolfex family, third generation, they did build this. I've been here before. I've had a town meeting with the employees. I've talked to them about what they do. This is a classic example of what Mitt Romney wants to do for America. More jobs through the private sector, through entrepreneurs, through hard work. That's exactly what they do here, and we're proud of them. <laughs> Folks, do you agree with me that we can't not afford, we cannot afford another four years of Barack Obama? Okay, good. I'm in the right place. Now, because we all believe that, how many of you have put up a sign for Mitt? How many of you have gone door to door for Mitt? How many of you have made a phone call for Mitt? Keep it up, we've got 12 days to go. Are we gonna do everything we possibly can to ensure a victory in 12 days? Now, let me say, there's one thing, there's one thing we haven't all done yet, and that's go down and vote. In Ohio, as you know, we have early voting. And at the Board of Elections right now, they're open for business. So how about after this event, we get in our cars and we go down to Broadway and vote early to be sure we can bank our votes and be sure that on Election Day, we then have more time to ensure other people get to the polls. Will you do that for me? Go vote early. Barack Obama has been in the state also. And you know what he says? He says, re-elect me because my economic policies are working. That's what he says. So uh, let me ask you. He said when he shoved through that trillion dollar stimulus plan in the US Congress, if you just do that, unemployment today will be 50% lower than it actually is. Folks, is it working? No. Not with 23 Americans struggling to find work. He also said, listen, if you put that health care bill through, the Obamacare bill that he shoved through without a single Republican vote, if you do that, premiums are going to go down for American families. He said $2,500. We just learned the premiums have gone up $2,500 for American families. Is it working? No. When he ran for election, what did he say? He said, elect me, and I'm going to cut the deficit in half. Folks, we just learned there's another trillion-dollar deficit this year. We've never had a trillion-dollar deficit before in this country until the last four years. We've had a 50% increase in the debt we're passing along to our kids and grandkids. Folks, that's wrong. It's immoral. Is it working? No. And it's even worse than that. We've gone from 32 to 46 million people on food stamps. That's 15 million more people, bigger than the entire population of the state of Ohio, new folks on food stamps. We have more people in poverty. We have a situation now where people can't find work, and so they're turning to the federal government. Does it sound to you like that's working? So what's President Obama going to do about it? Well, more of the same. What he's proposing is not something new. He does have a shiny new package that he's taken around the state of Ohio, but when you look inside of it, you know what it is? More of the same. Now, there are a couple exceptions to that, and I want to mention it here at Jet Machine because it's a company that will be affected by it. One is that he has promised a new policy and that's to raise taxes on almost one million small businesses around this country. One of those businesses we're at today. He has said that it's necessary to raise these taxes, but you know what? It's not going to help the economy. In fact, there's a study out saying it's going to result in the loss of 700,000 more jobs. We cannot afford that, folks. Instead, Mitt Romney's got a plan for tax reform that adds seven million jobs. Doesn't that sound like a better deal for American workers?
The second thing that President Obama has promised that's new is he's going to cut the military. His own budget has a $500 billion cut in the military. And then the sequester that the President said that Congress ought to do has another $500 billion of cuts to our military. Mitt Romney has said we cannot afford that with the dangers we face as a country. Let me tell you something here today to the 25,000 employees at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, to the folks right here at this company, because this is a contractor for some great things for our troops, to the companies like General Electric Aviation. Those folks need to be sure that we have a strong military because it's good for our forces, it's good for our economy. And to the President, I will say this. It's not a question of horses and bayonets. It's a question of a modern military to meet the very real challenges we face as a country and to ensure that our troops have the very best equipment and the very best weapons to do that job. And there is someone who gets it, and that's Mitt Romney. You saw it in the debate the other night when he was talking about the need for a strong military to ensure we can have peace through strength. You've seen it as he talks about the economy. He gets it. He understands how companies like Jet Machine create jobs and opportunity and help the families of the members of the team you see behind me here. He has done it. He did it in 25 years in the private sector, creating tens of thousands of jobs. He did it with the Olympics, turning around the Olympics at a time it was mired in scandal and debt, made America proud again after 9-11. He did it as governor of Massachusetts, where he inherited a budget deficit, and he ended up with a budget surplus while balancing the budget four years, 19 tax cuts, working with a legislature that was 87 percent Democrat. He knows you've got to find common ground. He knows you've got to find solutions. He knows Washington is broken, and we need him in Washington right now to do the same thing in Washington he did in Massachusetts. We're proud to support him. Ohio needs him. America needs him. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Mitt Romney. Cincinnati, welcome. Thank you so much. Great to be with you today. It's good to be here in Ohio, or as uh, Joe Biden would say, here in Iowa. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be here with so many friends and with Senator Rob Portman. What a great senator. What a great friend. And thank you for welcoming us here today. Now, if you haven't been real busy the last few weeks, you've had the chance to watch a few debates, which I enjoyed a great deal. I have to be honest with you. These, uh, these debates really have propelled our campaign across the country, and in some respects, I think they've, they've diminished the Obama campaign, because he has now uh, resorted to uh, talking about saving characters on Sesame Street and uh, word games, um, and, um, and of course, he... Uh, he continues to launch these misdirected attacks at me, and he knows they're not accurate, and they're not making much progress for him, and so his campaign gets smaller and smaller, focused on smaller and smaller things. Our campaign is about big things, because we happen to believe that America faces big challenges. We recognize this is a year with a big choice, and the Americans want to see big changes, and I'm going to bring it to this country. This is a, uh, 
This is a, a defining election, I believe. It's an election which defines a great deal about the country, but it's also defining about the American families and defining about your family. I say that because the choice that will be made, this big choice coming up, will have an impact on you and your family. If you're a senior, for instance, or if you have a senior that you're caring for, if President Obama were to get reelected and that senior were to need the care of a medical specialist, you might call the appointment secretary of the doctor and say, I'd like to make an appointment and, and be told, I I'm sorry, we're not taking any more Medicare patients. Because under Obamacare, some 50% of America's doctors are saying they won't accept new Medicare patients. Now, if I'm president, when I'm president, we're going to... President, President, we're going to repeal Obamacare and, re and put that $716 billion the President is taking out of Medicare, we're going to put it back into Medicare so you or the senior you're caring for can be sure that when you call a doctor, the doctor is going to say, I'm happy to make an appointment to see you. That's the difference between a Romney administration and an Obama administration. Now, for for those of you in your 40s and 50s uh, who have always anticipated that these would be the, the high-earning years, the most productive years, the years that you'd be able to put a little away for retirement or perhaps help, help your kids with, uh, with college, and yet you're finding that's harder and harder to do because incomes have been going down. At the same time, prices have been going up for things like gasoline and, and health care and, and food. I, I was speaking with a, a gentleman just the other day and, uh, and he said that he used to have a job at $25 an hour plus benefits. And now he's only able to get a job at $9 an hour. And he wonders what's going to become of him. What's going to happen to his future? The president's campaign slogan is forward. To this gentleman, things don't feel like they're going forward. It feels more like backward. To 23 million Americans, it feels like backward. Those that can't find good work. And so for the last... For the last year and four debates, three presidential debates and one vice presidential debate, the president's been looking for a plan. He's been looking for some way to help the gentleman I spoke about, some way to help the 23 million people that are out of work. He hasn't been able to find a plan. He hasn't been able to define what he's going to do to make America strong going forward. I have. I have a plan that will create 12 million jobs and rising take-home pay, and I'm going to help that man who needs that good job. You might have a, uh, a daughter graduating from college this year. And when she graduates, she's going to have about, I don't know, ten dollars or $20,000 of student debt, maybe more. And she knows she's going to be paying interest on that debt for a long, long time. But what she may not have noticed is that she also has about $50,000 of government debt. Not for things she bought but for things my generation spent money on, $50,000. And when she gets her first take-home pay check and she sees all this deducted by government, a lot of what she's paying for is the interest on the things we borrowed. And this president has no plan to get us to a balanced budget. He continues to spend a trillion dollars more every year, adding to her debt year after year. I will finally cut federal spending, I'll cap federal spending and get us on track to a balanced budget. You might, uh, you might have a child in school, and perhaps the school your child is going to is not the kind of quality institution you hoped it would be. You may be concerned that your child's not going to get the, the skills that he or she needs to be able to be successful and competitive in the, in the new economy. 
and yet you find another school, perhaps a charter school or a cyber learning school or another public school further from your home, and you say, I want to send my child there, but you're told in so many states across this country, no, 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 you can't do that. You must stay in this school. Your, your dollars won't follow your child as they go to another school. What, why, why is that? Well, it's in part because the teachers' union doesn't like the idea of school choice. I like school choice. And so I'm... And because... And because my campaign contributions don't come largely from the teachers' union, I don't have to do what the teachers' union tells me to do. I instead, I instead could do something which is this. I'm going to make sure all the federal dollars that go out to help schools go to the child instead so the child can choose, the, the parents can choose the school their child will go to and the federal dollars follow that child and we can have real school choice in America. This is a critical time for our country, and the choice of paths we choose will have an enormous impact. We have huge challenges, the debts I mentioned, the fact that our schools are underperforming, the fact that college kids getting out of school this year can't find jobs in half the cases or jobs that are at college level, the fact that they have thousands and thousands of dollars of debt that's on their back they're going to have to be paying for. It. These challenges are big challenges. This election is therefore a big choice. And America wants to see big changes, and we're going to bring big changes to get America stronger again. The path we're on, the path of status quo the President represents, will take us to $20 trillion in debt by the end of the next four years. I'll put us on a new path, a big change path, which gets us to a balanced budget. The path, the status quo path of the President cuts $716 billion from Medicare. I will restore that funding to Medicare and honor the promises that have been made to our seniors. The status the status, quo, the status quo path says that we're going to have Obamacare, that we're going to have bureaucrats telling you what kind of health care you could have. The big change path says we're going to make health care more like a consumer market. We're going to get government out of it and restore the freedom that you've always had in choosing your health care choice. The status quo path of this president continues to shrink our military year after year. He's planning on cutting out a trillion dollars from our military. Think of that. Think of the jobs we'll lose here in Ohio. Think also, it was the Secretary of Defense under President Obama that said that that path will cause our military to be devastated. Now, I believe in a very big change from that path. I want to restore our commitment to our military and make sure it always remains second to none in the world. The path we're on, the status quo path, is a path that doesn't have an answer about how to get our economy going, that doesn't know how to get the private sector to start creating jobs or how to build more take-home pay. The path we're on has an economy growing more slowly this year than it did last year and more slowly last year than the year before. The path we're on has the average income of an American family down by $4,300 per year over the President's term. The path we're on does not have new answers. The President has the same old answers as in the past. He wants another stimulus, he wants to hire more government workers, and he wants to raise taxes. There is no prospect whatsoever that that path will help our economy grow and put people to work and raise take-home pay. The big change Paul Ryan and I represent has five major steps to get this economy going. Number one, we're going to take full advantage of our energy, our coal, our oil, our gas, our nuclear, and our renewables.
We're, we're going to do something. We're going to do something that politicians have been speaking about for decades because technology allows us to do what they only thought was possible long ago, and that is by virtue of new drilling technology and all the resources that have been found in this country, we're going to get North American energy independence in eight years and keep billions of dollars and good jobs here. We're going to expand trade because businesses like this can sell products all over the world. American workers can compete with anyone in the world. I know that you think, well, our, our wages are high, but we're also very productive and we have technology that allows us to compete globally. If our government is more effective and gets off the back of our enterprises, we'll be able to sell goods around the world. And so I want to open up. I want to open up. I want to open up markets for us, particularly in Latin America, where the time zone and the the, uh, the language skills that we have will allow us to compete there. And by the way, Latin America has almost as large an economy as China. We all spend a lot of attention thinking about the opportunities in China, as well we should. But Latin America is next door and represents a huge opportunity. And by the way, if a nation cheats in trade, I will stop it. We'll hold them accountable. China's been doing it. We're going to get rid of that. We're going, to make sure, we're going to make sure the workers of today have the skills they need to compete for the jobs of today by having training programs that are really, really helpful to get people the, the, the kind of skills they need. And I, I say that because we have 47 different federal training programs, and they report to eight different federal agencies. You, you can think of all the overhead, all the expenditure, all the waste. I want to take that money, bundle up, give Ohio its fair share, and let Ohio create its own plans for its own workers. Let me mention one more. Let me mention one more of our five-step plan to get this economy going. And that is I want to make sure that we champion small business. We help small business grow and thrive. You've been listening. You've been listening to the people. You've been listening to the people who built their own small business talk about how their taxes go up and up and the regulatory burdens weigh them down further and further. I want to make sure that we keep our taxes coming down on small business. I'll get them to finally come down on small business and get regulators. And, and get our regulators to see that their job is not just to catch the bad guys, and that's an important task, but also to encourage the good guys. We need taxes and regulations and health care policies and environmental policies all to come together in such a way that we make it America the best place in the world for small business so we can create more jobs and more take-home pay for the American worker. That plan I described creates 12 million jobs in the next four years and turns around declining wages and makes them rise again with more take-home pay. That's the course that America needs to see. It's the choice we have. The Obama campaign doesn't have a plan. The Obama campaign is slipping because he's talking about smaller and smaller things, despite the fact that America has such huge challenges and that this is such an opportunity for America. And that's why on November 6th, I'm counting on Ohio to vote for big change. are great. You guys are great. I mean, you know, you know something, you know something's wrong about the direction we're headed right now. You know that we don't want to keep going on the same path we've been on for the last four years. You know we can't afford four more years like the last four years. You want, I mean, do you want real big change in this country? 
Well, you're going to get it on November 6th. You're going to make it happen. We're going to get America on track again. Now, let me tell you, I want you to know how optimistic I'm about the future. I'm convinced that we're going to be able to care for our seniors in the way they've been promised. We're going to restore and protect Medicare and Social Security. I'm confident that people in their 40s and 50s are going to be able to get better jobs and more take-home pay. I'm confident that that college student who's coming out of school this spring will have less debt as a result of our administration and have a better chance for a good job. I'm confident, I'm confident that as your child gets to go to the school of your choice, that he or she will have a, an opportunity for a better education. I'm confident in our future. I'm convinced that America is going to come roaring back. And I say that in part because of the power of the plan that we've described over these last two years, but also because of the power of the American heart and character. I've had the... Uh, I'm optimistic about the future because I've, I've seen the great qualities of the human spirit evidenced in the, the lives of American people. Throughout my lifetime, I've, I've had the chance to see the best of America, and it gives me hope and confidence about the future. Some years ago, I was a uh, Boy Scout leader, and I was at a... There's a Boy Scouter. Hi. There you go. And I was at a Boy Scout Court of Honor which is where the Eagle Awards are given and other Boy Scout uh, awards are given. And uh, they had a Formica table up front, and I, I was uh, seated at the end of the table next to an American flag. And the, uh, the fellow who was at the podium was the Scoutmaster from Monument, Colorado. And he said that his Boy Scout troop wanted to have a, a very special American flag. So they, they bought one with gold tassels around the outside and had it flown above the Capitol. And when it came back, they decided to ask NASA if they'd take the flag on the space shuttle. And uh, NASA agreed. He said, you can imagine how proud the boys were from their homerooms at school, being able to watch TV sets, to watch the shuttle launch. And they, they watched that shuttle going up, knowing their flag was on board. And then they saw it explode on the TV screen. And he said he called NASA a couple of weeks later and said, have you found any remnant of our flag? And he said, NASA said they had not. He explained he went on to call every week, month after month after month, and finally gave up. And then one day he was reading in a newspaper an article about the debris from the Challenger disaster. And it mentioned something about a flag. And so he called NASA again, said, have you found some remnant of our flag? And they said, in fact, we have a presentation to make to you. So NASA came together with a Boy Scout troop, and they handed the boys this plastic container and he said, we opened it up, and inside was our flag in perfect condition. <laughs> and then he said, that's it in the flagpole next to Mr. Romney. And I, I looked at the flag and reached over and grabbed it and pulled it out, and it was as if electricity was running through my arms. And, and I, thought, I thought about the, the men and women in our space program who put their lives at risk for learning, for us. Pioneers like Neil Armstrong, heroes. I thought of those who lost their lives in this tragedy and the Challenger disaster. I thought about our men and women in uniform who day in and day out put their lives in danger, who sacrificed for us. I love, uh, I love that stanza in one of our national hymns, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country love, and mercy more than life. Would our veterans and members of the armed services please raise your hands so we can recognize you here.
you see it's a... It's part of the American character to live for something greater than ourselves. Those astronauts do and did. Those who've served in our military do and did. A single mom that's scrimping to make sure she has a great meal at the table for her kids makes that kind of sacrifice and lives for something bigger than herself. The, the dad who's doing two jobs right now so he can afford to buy kids the clothes that won't make them stand out from the other kids at school. The mom and dad who this year have decided not to exchange Christmas gifts so they'll be able to have enough for their kids to have a great Christmas. Th this is the American character, to live for things that we find more dear than ourselves, our family, our faith, our community, our schools, our nation. This is a time of enormous consequence for America. And so we come together, you come together, in a day like this to, to see someone running for president. This election is not about me. It's not about the Republican Party. It's about America. And it's about your family. I commit to you that when Paul Ryan and I get to Washington, we will bring big change to Washington to get this country on track. And I commit, I commit that we'll build stronger families and a stronger economy and maintain a military so strong no one would ever think of testing it. We'll keep this nation the hope of the earth. But I need you to commit as well, not only to vote and vote early. I won't say often, just vote early. <laughs> but I need you to find someone else who, who might be thinking about voting for the other side and, and ask them, don't you think it's time for, for a big change in the course of this country, or do you like things the way they are? Do you like the four years you've enjoyed? My guess is you're going to be able to convince them to join our team. Go out there and find some people. Bring into the polls. And by the way, if there's someone who doesn't have a right to the polls, help them get to the polls. We need to make sure that Ohio was able to send a message loud and clear. We want real change. We want big change. We're ready. This is our time. I need your help. We're going to win on November 6th. Thank you, Ohio. Let's take back America. Thank you so much. Baby, what you got going on Saturday, you know, words gotta be. 